Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at a couple of affordable FPGA starter kits to get you into FPGAs. But before I jump into that, I thought I'd just do a quick little uh, primer here on exactly how easy is it to hook up and use an FPGA. As I mentioned in my previous videos, which I'll link in, the answer is not very easy at all. Take for example, um, your classic micro controller here, your PIC, your AVR, your MSP, whatever it is, pretty easy for a beginner to use, even if you don't use something simple like, like a, uh, a development uh, board like an Arduino, for example. They're really easy. You get your little PIC or your AVR chip, you stick it on your breadboard, you hook up five volts to it, and you can flash an LED just using a simple low cost uh, program which plugs into your USB port, couple of wires come over, goes into your chip, and Bob's your uncle. Really easy to do. They've got built-in oscillators, like there might be a reset pin on here. You, often you don't even need to worry about that because it's got an internal pull-up. There's no other configuration stuff. Internal oscillators allow the thing to work or run your program. And you can get a flashing LED uh, blinky circuit up and running very easily and cheaply. But is it the same for FPGAs? Nope. Let's take a look at why. So you can't just do the same thing you can with the micro here. Throw it on your breadboard, hook up your uh, five volt supply, hook up your USB programmer, JTAG programmer, to the thing and get it to blink your LED. It's not that easy like it is with a microcontroller. Yes, you can get uh, simple, cheap uh, little JTAG programmers, which I've done a separate video on that will be linked down below how the JTAG uh, programming system works for FPGAs. And but uh, yeah, you can get these cheap programmers, and but it doesn't work the same as micros. Why? Because of quite a few things which we're going to take a look at. First of all, they come in a, usually come in pain in the ass BGA packages, not a simple uh, friendly dip package which you can just plug into your breadboard. Maybe some of the low end ones might come in a quad flat pack, but it might be, you know, a hundred pins or something like that. Real pain in the ass. So right off the bat there, you're going to have to mount this thing on some sort of adapter board at a bare minimum to get the thing uh, in a usable format that you can connect all your stuff up to. The next thing is that these things are volatile. What that means is that they don't have flash memory in them like uh, your microcontroller does. So yeah, you can just program it via the uh, JTAG programmer, but as soon as you remove the power, poof, your design's gone. You have to download it again. Hopeless. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Next thing is, is that there, um, there's no internal oscillators in these things like there are on your microcontroller. So once again, you've got to add in an external oscillator just to get the damn thing working. Oh, and the next thing is that they're generally not five volt compatible. So you can't just hook them up to your regular five volt power supply like you used to. Heck, some of them you can't even hook up to a 3.3 volt supply. They often require multiple uh, voltages for internal core voltages and stuff like that for some of your higher end ones. Some of your lower end ones, no, you can just get away with single 3.3, but it's something to be aware of. These things aren't easy. We haven't even gotten to all the configuration pins yet. So here's just some of the crazy stuff you might need to add in red here around your basic circuit, which you didn't have to add for your microcontroller here. This is like for a uh, Xilinx FPGA, for example. It's not bang on, it's just a rough example. We'll do a screen capture in the middle of exactly what you need for a basic uh, JTAG flash uh, boot configuration for a typical FPGA. But as I said, it's going to uh, change based on the vendor, based on the uh, family of FPGA. So you have to read the documentation, the very extensive documentation, as we'll see, for the individual, for the exact FPGA, which you're using just to get the damn thing up and running. So you've got your USB, simple little USB uh, JTAG programmer here, but you now need a second chip here, which is your configuration flash memory, which stores all the information for your FPGA. Then you've got to hook up that correctly. You have to tie it into the JTAG system that I've done the video on so that it uh, forms a loop 
uh, through the JTAG chain there, it's called, and you have to get that right. If you screw that up, it's just not going to work. Um, then you've got all the uh, configuration lines, the data, init, reset lines, the clocks, uh, the done line, all that sort of stuff. You've got to hook that up correctly. If you screw up one of those lines and you don't get it right, it's just not going to work. And then you've got various uh, VCC voltages for your different banks, which I've done a separate video on before linked down below. And you've got weird pins like H-swap enable. What does that do? Well, you've got to read the documentation to find out, don't you? Uh, you've got mode pins down here, for example, in these Xilinx FPGAs. You've got to put those in a certain configuration to power the thing up. Oh, sometimes you don't now with the more modern families. You've got a separate JTAG interface. Oh, but there's, <laughs> the thing is, there's a lot of stuff you've got to do. This uh, flash over here has to have the same JTAG programming voltage as everything else. And if all that stuff isn't done, then, you know, your FPGA is just not going to work. It's going to be, you're going to be sitting there scratching your head and saying these FPGAs suck. I'm going back to my microcontrollers. But basically why I'm doing all this and telling you about it is because it's not easy to do for a beginner. So a beginner shouldn't be mucking around with all this stuff. You should get one of these demo kits that we're going to take a look at that have all this stuff already done for you so and already hooked up so you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. It just, you know, somebody's done all the hard work to figure out how to get this thing to boot up and make it work. And just to show you that I wasn't kidding, here is the Spartan 6 FPGA configuration user guide. This is just for the configuring and getting your FPGA up and running and doing what you want. And uh, there's a different one of these for each different uh, Xilinx family and the other manufacturers will also have uh, similar types of guides. And this guide is, well, 164 pages long, folks. That is just to get the FPGA configuration doing various things. And granted, there are lots of different ways that you can configure uh, FPGAs, but you know, look at uh, this sort of stuff. It's configuring all sorts of high speed priority options, JTAGs, master slaves, most non mod, multi boot, safe upgrade, oh, blah, 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 select map data loading, oh, man, you name it, look at it, unbelievable. But Let's go down here. You don't get down our uh, CRC configurations, daisy chain. Oh, man, it's incredible. But let's go down to page oh, 26, shall we? I think it's on. Get down to page 26 here, and uh, bingo. Here is our basic configuration that we're going to use for a uh, Xilinx Spartan 6, for example. And that's how to hook it up. There's the FPGA. There's the uh, platform flash memory, as they call it, the external flash memory. They've got the daisy chaining of the uh, JTAG there. You can see like TDI coming in, TDO going out, into TDI of the flash, TDO going back out to your um, Xilinx cable header here for your uh, programmer. And there's those mode pins there. There's H-swap enable, the various bank voltages there and there. And look, if you don't get this VCC aux pin, if you forget to hook that up, then, well, your JTAG's not going to work. And, you know, the thing's just going to sit there and do nothing. And you're going to be scratching your head think it might be a software problem or I don't know something going on so there's all sorts of things you have to hook up just to get your FPGA programmed working and boot up just so you can run that blinky lead program it's incredible and there's still a hundred and something pages left oh my goodness but most of the time you don't have to look at all this because you're not going to be using the more obscure modes but anyway that's how complicated it is